Suppose that on a dark night, a police officer is walking down the street, uh, and to their current knowledge, uh, that street is empty. All of a sudden, they hear an alarm go off. And to their surprise, when looking across the street, they see a broken window. Coming out of that broken window is a person climbing uh, with seemingly a large duffel bag on their back. On further inspection, the police officer realizes that the duffel bag is full of items that are sold at the store. So then the police officer doesn't really need to hesitate in this situation. This person appears to be doing some form of dishonest activity. In particular, it looks like they're stealing from the store. So an important question that we might want to ask here is, what type of reasoning process did the police officer use uh, to come to this conclusion? And it is a rather convincing uh, conclusion. Thought processes um, and reasoning like this are actually at the core of how we do science, or even how just regular humans make decisions. It is obviously very easy to get caught up in the hype of shows like Sherlock Holmes, where the protagonist can use uh, deductive logic or logical reasoning um, to come to extremely convincing um, conclusions. Shows will have you believe that uh, deductive reasoning or deductive logic um, is an extremely potent um, and powerful reasoning process that can be applied if you're smart enough uh, to lots of everyday uh, situations, even as complicated as police investigations. But the real truth is, is that the world is extremely complicated. Real world situations are much more uncertain. And regardless of how smart you are, you will often come across situations or you will usually come across situations where you have incomplete information and nonetheless, you need to make decisions. So to analyze what I mean by this, let's return to our discussion of our example of the police officer. It is quite clear that our police officer is not using logical deduction based on the evidence uh, that they had before them. The evidence that they have is that the police officer inspected the bag and found that there were a number of items in the bag that the store sells. Now, intuitively, you might be thinking, well, obviously the suspect is guilty then, right? But on the contrary, there could be a perfectly reasonable explanation for why this person um, had these items in this duffel bag. Perhaps the alleged thief is actually the store owner. Coming across the store, they found a broken window. Perhaps something innocent caused uh, the window to break or something else. And perhaps the owner came across uh, this broken window very late at night. So it was too late to call someone uh, to fix it. So the solution that they came up with was to gather the most valuable things in the store and take them home with them. So at least by this example, the police officer, based off of the evidence uh, that they have, cannot be 100% certain um, that this person is in fact guilty. So the initial guess or the initial uh, intuitive response to this situation was not logical deduction. Nonetheless, I bet many of you watching this video found the conclusions of the police officer after inspection of the bag uh, to be very convincing. So why is that? The reason for this is not because they did cold, hard logic. It's because the conclusion was plausible, extremely plausible, in fact. Humans, through all of our experience in our life, perform uh, this type of plausible reasoning every day. It's what we are naturally trained to do. Before you go to school and you're exposed to rigorous logic and mathematical theory, you learn to make decisions with plausible reasoning. The human experience is extremely rich with situations where you have to make choices based off of incomplete information. This can be as simple as trusting that when you go to the grocery store and you buy a food item, maybe it's some type of meat, on that meat, there's going to be an expiration date. And assuming we're being uh, responsible here and we're buying this uh, meat on a day before the expiration date, our prior experience tells us that although we don't know everything about where this meat came from or this food product came from, we know it's probably safe to eat. You might also be forced to uh, use plausible reasoning for situations that are even more uncertain, where you lack even more information. A situation like this 
could be trying to decide what major you're going to pick uh, when you attend university. Very rarely in the human experience do you face questions in your life where you can actually use deductive logic. You almost always lack information. From this perspective, uh, formal logic is actually an abstraction that we use to do reasoning when we are solving, you know, very well-constructed problems like the ones you see in mathematics. So with this in mind, uh, let's briefly uh, discuss deductive reasoning or deductive logic, whatever you want to call it, uh, just to get a feel for it so we can contrast it with plausible reasoning and the actual reasoning um, humans use on a day-to-day -day basis. We might have two uh, statements and an assertion about those statements. So let's call these statements A and B. Namely, we might say that if we find that A is true, then B is true. So if we then test the validity of a statement A and we find that it is true, we are forced to conclude that the statement B is true. We see this all the time in mathematics. This is just an implication. We could then discuss the inverse of this statement. If we test B instead of A and we find that B is false, then we know that A is false. Now, I want you to pause here and think about why this doesn't mean that if we test B and find that B is true, this doesn't mean that A is true. We just can't deduce that from that information. This has a very sort of uh, deep implication uh, for us. And what I mean by that is that even though we might have a very nice um, implication that A implies B, we might be faced with a real world example where we collect information uh, that doesn't nicely fit inside of our deductive reasoning. We might simply collect information or have information that doesn't allow us to proceed in a problem. So where do we go from here? Well, what we might do is we might weaken our logic a little bit. So let's say we still have, if A uh, is true, then B is true. And don't worry if you are finding the fact that I'm using letters A and B to represent these things, I'm going to give um, a concrete example uh, once we get a little bit further in the video. So we have that if A is true, then B is true. And we might test that uh, B is in fact true. So we know that B is true. Now in logical deduction, we wouldn't be able to say anything about A. But what we might feel is intuitively true is that A becomes more plausible. A really good example of this to appeal to is the following. A could be the statement that it is going to rain at 5 p.m. Then an obvious consequence of this that could be our statement B is that it would need to get cloudy before 5 p.m. This is sort of obvious. The sky has to get cloudy, perhaps even dark, uh, prior to it raining. We've all done this. We have gone outside and looked up at the sky and seen a specific cloud pattern, dark, cloudy, and deduced that it is likely to rain. But of course, observing the clouds does not mean it's going to rain. All it means is that it is more plausible to rain. So if our uh, deduction is that if A is true, then B is true, this only really tells us logical consequences. These statements can often completely lack physical causality. The rain at 5 p.m. did not cause the clouds to appear before it. So at face value, what type of reasoning process is actually more useful? So what we have seen here is that clouds uh, likely imply rain, a plausible reasoning argument that we have gained from experience, versus rain implies clouds, something that is certain, logical, there's nothing wrong with that deduction, but it is clearly a non-causal statement. And when compared to our plausible reasoning argument, um, it probably appears a little useless. So to be clear here, logical deduction or logical consequence and physical causality are distinct concepts. Now these can sometimes overlap, but they don't have to. Another weaker plausible reasoning uh, type argument would be the following. Suppose that again, we have that if A is true, then B is true. If we find that A itself is false, the logical deduction argument doesn't really tell us anything. But from plausible reasoning, it might be intuitive to then say that B becomes less plausible. So from logical deduction, finding that A is false doesn't tell us anything about B, 
but from plausible reasoning, we have eliminated one of the possible reasons for B to be true, and therefore B being true becomes less plausible. Sort of intuitive, right? Actually, if we return to our police officer example, they don't actually use uh, these forms of weaker logical arguments or plausible reasoning arguments. They use something uh, sort of even weaker than that. Instead, their argument goes something like the following. If A is true, then B is more plausible. They then observed that B is true. Therefore, they concluded that A is more plausible. So let's break this down in our example. If the person climbing out of the window is a thief, the duffel bag will likely be filled with, uh, with stolen goods. The police officer then verified that the duffel bag was in fact full of items at the store. And then they concluded that our suspect was a plausible thief. So if we start ourselves with pure deductive reasoning, and then we find ourselves departing from that with more plausible reasoning, uh, this argument should feel a lot weaker. But in reality, these arguments are actually quite convincing. Somehow the human mind uh, naturally performs plausible reasoning type calculations. Without numerical values for what will inevitably become probabilities, we are able to process incomplete information and we have an intuitive understanding of this information, allowing us to say, with new information, this is more plausible or less plausible. We can look back at our experience of just seeing when it rains by noticing that the clouds are dark, um, and of course that there are clouds in the sky at all, we can conclude that rain is more likely. We very much depend on prior information uh, to assign these plausible reasoning arguments that we employ in our everyday life. Now, at this point, I suspect there are probably uh, two reactions, I mean, probably more, but two reactions that I, that I think would be interesting to address here. So if you are a person who is wrapped up in mathematics, or maybe you are a theoretical physicist or an aspiring theoretical physicist, you might actually be intrigued by this idea. This idea that in fact, a lot of what we do um, is very much idealizations. Oftentimes, uh, we theorists will work with models of the universe or models of the system we're interested in that are greatly simplified. And they are great, greatly simplified because from prior knowledge, we know that certain terms, certain things won't actually have uh, that big of an effect on the outcome of our analytics. But to be perfectly honest with you, the incredible accuracy of physical predictions um, and models uh, that we have make it easy uh, to get lost in sort of clean logic um, and mathematical rigor um, and approaches to problems like that. You might, you might almost be tempted to think that this type of reasoning, this deductive re rigorous reasoning um, is universal, but clearly this just isn't uh, the case. On the other hand, you might think that this observation is obviously trivial. Uh, what I'm talking about here is something called common sense. But I claim that the project of science um, and the language of probability theory is just really that. It is just common sense in disguise. And so I randomly just jumped from plausible reasoning to, you know, probability theory. But uh, you might notice that deductive logic allows you to go through several layers of reasoning without losing accuracy. The reliability of our conclusion never changes uh, regardless of how complex the reasoning was to arrive at that conclusion. On the contrary, intuitively, if we then appeal to our weaker uh, deductive arguments of plausible reasoning, the longer the reasoning process is in plausible reasoning, um, the less confidence you'll intuitively have in its conclusion. So if we have something like if A is true, then B is more plausible. If B is plausible, then C is plausible. And you can imagine this going on for many, many layers. The more layers we have, um, the less plausible the conclusion of our argument uh, will actually be. So the extra complexity in our arguments will likely decrease our confidence in the outcome. So this type of plausible reasoning should very much feel or sound like probabilities to you. Probability theory and statistics 
is the true language of science. So this is probably the most obvious uh, in the realm of experiments, where scientists carefully uh, collect and analyze data, and they compare the outcomes uh, to hypotheses. Physicists have come such a long way in modeling only certain aspects of the universe uh, that it's probably easy to forget this. Famous physicists will often go on TV and say something like, we are looking into the eyes of God. This is the language of the universe. The equations are the equations that we have in the in physics is the fundamental code of the universe or, or something like this. And that, of course, might be true. And certainly the romanticization of the results in physics get the audience and the public very excited. But at the end of the day, the language of science is found in probability theory um, and statistics. And in the end, one can view the frameworks of probability theory and statistics as sort of a, a rigorous way to perform plausible reasoning. Jaynes would actually call it, uh, in fact, that probability is um, the natural extension to logic. Probability theory gives us the unique set of rules and the language to perform plausible reasoning and approach scientific questions. So all I've really done here is given sort of a, a vague introduction to something that is related to the foundations of probability um, and how we think about probability. So there's an incredible amount of things uh, to cover and that I will cover. I'm going to make more videos about this topic. But hopefully this little introduction got you thinking a bit about the type of reasoning uh, you perform on a day-to-day -day basis, perhaps as a uh, perhaps in some professional capacity, perhaps even as a scientist. But for those regular viewers of the channel, probability theory is also deeply interesting in particular for us because it is, because it is the language we use uh, to describe uh, physical systems with many participating degrees of freedom. You know, matter in bulk. In particular, the types of problems we do in condensed matter physics and statistical mechanics and thermodynamics. At its core, all of these things have uh, their foundations in probability theory. And so we'll talk about this uh, more in the coming videos. But that's it for uh, today's video. If you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.